So we named our team Team PC1, if you're familiar with principal components, we figure out what that means. And as Chris mentioned, we're one of the most diverse teams here at the bootcamp. We have the oldest and youngest person on the team. We come from three different countries. We have both genders and a wide range of backgrounds. And we worked really well as a team, and we decided to work on the Yelp data set, which is a, a data set challenge that Yelp puts out. It's a lot of information about the users and about businesses. So just a little bit about the team. I'm named David Steinmetz, and my background is in material science. Recently, I was a management consultant, and the part of my past jobs that I always liked was taking insight out of data and making it into something that someone can use. So that's why I became a data scientist. And I'll allow the other team members who are here to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Aiko, and I used to work, uh, be a college professor at Berkeley. And later I came to the finance industry. So now I've become a data scientist. Thank you. Uh, I'm Amy. I just graduated from UCLA with a staff degree. And I came to New York for, to join this book camp. And I will be moving back to California to work. Right, and our last team member is Greg. He unfortunately can't be with us tonight. He has extensive experience in both in the private sector and in government. It was a pleasure working with all these people. So, as Chris mentioned, have you ever been out with someone and you said, hey, let's go get something to eat? You say, yeah, that's great, but you can't really agree exactly on what you want to eat. So it's like, well, maybe I want steak. Yeah, but, you know, I kind of want Asian tonight. So wouldn't it be great if instead of getting recommendations just for yourself and then arguing over them with another person, you could actually get recommendations that are based on the preferences of more than one user for restaurants that would actually suit both of you? We thought we might be able to do something with that. So would it be possible to combine the Yelp data that is publicly available about users and businesses with machine learning in order to give recommendations for more than one user, so two or more? We said, Yes. The answer is an app that we built called Yelp Nearby. And it takes recommend the user preferences of more than one user and gives out restaurant recommendations that are tailored specifically to both of those users. So I'll turn it over to Amy to talk a little bit about the front end of the app. Uh, before we go into front end, this is the breakdown of our project. Uh, the front end was built based on Flask. And we also call Google Maps API to render the maps in real time and get the boundary, uh, get the restaurants in the boundary. And the back end, we use Python. We use Fast because it communicates with Python very well. And they, they will be talking about the back end. And this is the front page of our app. I'll just go directly into the app and show you guys how it works. So uh, as of now, we can log in two users. So it's making predictions. So it's making predictions based on the preference of two users, uh, including their past reviews, restaurants that they've been to, and all the ratings they've given. and we have a lot of cuisines you can choose from. And you can use this app to go anywhere in the US, any major US cities, and you can zoom in and zoom out to select the, uh, the boundary of the map. And right now, it shows the current locations. We are in Midtown. So let's see what it gives out uh, for Mexican, Chinese, and burgers for these two users. So these are all, all the recommendations. If you click on the on each markers, you can see the address, and you can actually go to the Yelp page to see more details. And you can scroll down to see all recommendations, and all the details will be here. And if you want, you can go anywhere in the US. So I'll pass it to Ico. So our uh, recommendation engine is consists of three steps. So it's actually a pipeline. So in this first step, it's actually a so-called collaborative uh, theory. It's the probably most advanced uh, kind of recommendation engine nowadays. 
And but because we are on to do very advanced, I mean, recommendation, and uh, for, for dual users, this uh, CF techniques does, doesn't cover it. And also, we want to uh, consider all the major cities in the US. Unluckily, the YAP data set doesn't cover many cities like New York City and San Francisco, etc. So, in order for it to work, our uh, pipeline is a second step, which is some type of clustering technique to kind of help you to cluster different kind of restaurant business into different groups. But once you do that, you can actually send our recommendation into the clusters and compare it with the local restaurants you find from yeah, the API, and then give out the final recommendation. Okay. So there are many kinds of recommendation techniques out, uh, nowadays, and as uh, there's no perfect machine learning technique, there's no perfect recommendation engine. It really depends on your need. But two types of recommendation techniques most relevant to our uh, study one is the more traditional content or item-based system. And um, the main focus is the co collaborative filtering, which is CF technique. And each of them has its own I mean, benefit and also and disadvantages. But we want to combine these, these two, and which make our uh, recommendation engine a so-called hybrid uh, technique in the literature. And the CF have a special advantage that you can actually make recommendations uh, even without any information on the restaurants or the users. Only based on the user's recommendation uh, itself, you can give recommendation. And also, if the recommend uh, the user only make a, a very sparse recommendation or re review, sorry, and then the CF technique can make an educated guess based on the other user's pattern and recommend the, the, the restaurant to a single user. So let's make this our focus in our study. So in this example, we look at the, this is a matrix, and we have three different users, one, two, and three, and we have four different restaurants, restaurant one, two, and three. And the user one make a rating on the first restaurant with five star, and third restaurant with two star, and similarly, user three make a rating of the first restaurant at one star, and uh, the rating four for the first restaurant, etc. So this is a very small a toy example, but in real life, we can imagine that there are millions of users in US, and in US there are at least half a million restaurants over here. So we are facing a big matrices, which is is very sparse. Most of the entries are zero. And especially in the uh, YAP data set, we have the difficulty that most of the users only make four or five different reviews. So the challenge is how do you make recommendation based on some kind of income with information. So the main technique behind this is the metric factorization. So suppose your user number is U, capital U, and suppose you have your item number, in this case the restaurant's number is capital I, so you have a U cross I matrix, which is very, very huge and sparse matrix. How do you actually encode information in a less amount of information? And the key is actually the matrix factorization. The matrix factorization allows you to factorize this huge sparse matrix into a product of U cross F times the F cross I matrix, where F, capital F, you know the number of latent factors that you assign to this system. So in this way, the complicated interactions between the user and the restaurants is completely encoded up to some kind of error, error terms by F different factors. So F different factors can be used to explain all the different patterns. That's the key idea of the CF. And based on this, we can also grab that, the commercial package we use, allow us to add the linear regression term and also the uh, reach regression, uh, regression term into the system and become a complete system that we can re make recommendations. And this linear term is very important because uh, once you have a linear term, you can add the side features into the systems and enhance the uh, accuracy of your forecast. And in some examples, I mean, this is not a whole list we use, but uh, the, in the users, we can include a 
number of elite ears the user have. Because among the young users, some of them are so-called elite. They, some of the reports say they have a keen status because uh, they actually have free tool, free events, and become the leaders among the YAP reviewers. And uh, how many review it, 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 uh, the, the user gives, and the rating they give the restaurants, the statistics, and also the location of the user. And similarly, on the restaurant side, we also talk about the rating, number of review, and uh, how many edits give the rating to the restaurant, etc. So based on these features, we can input into a CF engine and do recommendation. So I uh, give uh, the that uh, David explain about the clustering step. So once we get recommendations out for a specific user, how do we actually transfer that to a different place in the United States? Most of the data from the Yelp data set was actually in Nevada and Arizona and so on and so forth, but we're in New York, so how do we get recommendations? The solution we came up with was clustering the restaurants in the local area, such as in New York, and clustering all of the businesses that are in the Yelp data set. And then when recommendations come out from the recommendation engine, we find clusters which are similar in a local area to those recommendations and then recommend restaurants in those clusters. The features that we used were ratings, price range, and review counts in order to make these clusters. We wanted to use more features, but the amount of data that Yelp gave out in the data set was actually much more than you can actually get from the Yelp API. So we were restricted actually to these, and we can use the other data in order to create the clusters in the data set, but we can't actually get that data from the Yelp API in order to assign the clusters to those restaurants in the local area. So we considered a number of different clustering algorithms. You might be familiar with k-means. It assumes that all the clusters are spherical, for instance, or hierarchical clustering. But we found that density-based scanning worked best. It was a kind of a hybrid between k-means and hierarchical clustering. It ran relatively quickly, and it gave us decent clusters. So just a word on a few next steps. We had two weeks to do this project, and we had a lot of great ideas that we wanted to incorporate into this. App. And some of them are, for instance, be able to extract information from the user reviews or more information from the user reviews. There's a lot in there. NLP is not a trivial topic that you learn in a day. And there is a very nice technique called latent Dirichlet allocation, which essentially is topic modeling for the reviews. And in order to take that and incorporate that information uh, into the app and into what we're using here to make recommendations, uh, take some more time, but we're interested in doing that. The next one is obviously to use more information from the reviews to approve the recommendations, and then include users not existing in the current data set. So right now, the user already has to be in the data set in order to be able to get a recommendation. There's a problem with cold start if it's a new user, or for instance, uh, you know, Yelp would have all the users in their system, but we didn't, so if a new user comes in, how would we actually incorporate them? And then extend it to a larger group of users. Right now we have two people, but if you're out with a group of four, you might still want to find a restaurant in which everyone can agree on. So that's our presentation for tonight. Thank you for your attention, thank you for being here, and I'll take any questions. Is, well, we haven't yet. There are a lot of features on the Yelp site and from the Yelp API which we would like to get. It really depends upon whether that information you can get from the Yelp API. So in the large data set, they give a lot of information about businesses. But in what you can actually get from any business uh, when you create the API is rather limited in terms of business attributes and so on and so forth. So what does this uh, feature Oh, I'll pass that on to Ico. Uh, there are some try and error, but also really depends on the insight. Because we do a lot of uh, study on the data and uh, EDA, etc., to see what kind of feature have uh, influences. Because the 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 graph that does allow you to evaluate the prediction accuracy. 
and uh, so do a throw in the different features and see uh, how how the data come out. So this is the way to do it. What are those features? So do they have any meaning in the features? Oh yes, yes, they are they are the attribute from the yep, APIs. So the one I showed you is actually the basic statistics of the, for example, the, the what kind of rating does the user give? Because you know that different users tend to give uh, different stars. So if a very picky user may give three stars to many restaurants, but the other one will give five stars to whatever restaurant he faced. So the the average rating of the user is is there, and the average uh, rating for the restaurant is also there. So these are based on. Uh, you also need to do cross-range analysis on the users and as well as on the restaurants to see what kind of pattern you find out. And uh, they are the main things which actually affect the uh, accuracy of your model. Have you do a regression? No, the model actually is uh, done by GraphDev. But in, in that single model, it also it includes the so-called metric factorization, also the linear regression inside it, and also the so-called L2 regularization which is uh, another name called rich regression, inside the same package. And the, so this is a very advanced uh, one, because the usual, if you go to uh, many other machine learning uh, algo, it allows you to, to do simple uh, metric factorization, but there's no linear regression. But the drawback of that approach is that uh, once you have a so-called cold start problem, if you have a new user, you are if you're no review at all, so you cannot do anything. But this partially uh, solved the problem because even for new user, as far as you have an uh, attribute, even though without any review, suppose the user just joined uh, yet and uh, you have a statistics but with no review, you can still do something with it using the linear regression part. So everything is in the, in the same set of equations. It's not, in the, it's not different equations. Same set of equations, it contains linear regression, also factorization, and uh, so-called L2 regularization in one package. Another side note is that we choose Grab that because uh, it's a very powerful commercial package. You can do computation even if your uh, memory resource is very limited. And of course, can be pulled to AWS. So we are very happy about a package, but it's not free. So, but for bookend students, we have a one year I mean, trial license. But it's a very powerful uh, package. Any question? Price point, yes. Uh, we we include price point in our in, in our uh, regression because uh, in the YAP data set, it, uh, price point is categorized into one, two, three, four. So we actually it's included in our features, but I, I couldn't list it in one page, so I skipped it. Yes. Can you include like maybe the difference in the strength of opinion from person A versus person B? Maybe person A has like a strong opinion on what he really likes to eat, but person B doesn't really have a strong. It could be, but uh, we haven't. Uh, but the way we think about the question is actually we, for example, we consider that uh, probably probably not as the same as yours question, but it's actually inside the review system, uh, user system. There are special uh, users like Elite, and uh, they have different opinion from the others, because the general kind of become this is based on statistics. And statistics always go to the mean. But this kind of is not going to follow the mean. So it's very interesting to, to know how do you predict their behavior. And even so, or more, you can pr probably try to recommend to the regular user what it is like. But I, I recommend you to you the what the true critics uh, like eat. And this kind of thing, we, we, we have thought about this, but we haven't included in the